there is more than one way to approach most legal research problems. Before you search, think about what you need to find and where that information is likely to be. It's important to choose the research platform that contains materials of the type and subject matter that will likely provide you with the information you seek. Many primary legal materials are available on free websites as well as on subscription databases, but many secondary sources are protected by copyright and may only be available on one publisher's platform. For example, Environmental Law by William H. Rogers is on Westlaw, while the Treatise on Environmental Law by Frank P. Grad is on LexisNexis. Some databases have date-limited content. For example, the Bloomberg BNA International Environment Reporter, electronically, has content back to February 7, 1996, which is Volume 19, Issue 3. So almost 20 years of articles are not available electronically and are only available in print. On many systems, you can run a global search without choosing which content to search, but a global search may not reach all the available content on that platform. For example, a global search on Westlaw searches only the content in the left two columns and not the information in the third column, which includes dockets, news, legislative history, international material, maybe just what you're looking for. The Boston College catalog, which is available from the Law Library homepage, defaults to searching across books and articles, but you can choose to search just books or just articles or even to look through our collection of research guides to get some background information before you search. Once you've decided what to look for and where to look for it, you may also have options about how to search for it. Lexis and Westlaw offer more than one type of search engine. The researcher can choose whether or not to use Boolean searching, sometimes called terms and connectors, or to just run a Google type search. But there are many systems that offer only Boolean searching. Sometimes you can get better results by running a more precise search on the front end. A catalog search for any items that contain the terms Harvard Law Review anywhere in the record in the Boston College Library's catalog retrieved 757 records. Requiring the words Harvard Law Review to be an exact phrase brought the results down to 178, and requiring that ex exact phrase to be in the title brought it down to just 41. Some types of limitations, like restricting your search to journals, can be made just as easily before or after searching. But some systems provide you with many more search options if you make your restrictions up front. For example, this is the Lexis Advanced Case Searching page, and you can see some of the fields that are available because we're looking just through cases include things like court, citation, history, disposition, whereas on the Lexis Codes advanced searching page, there's a different set of segments or fields, including text, history, unannotated. Sometimes the best way to search isn't to search at all, but to just browse. This is an excerpt of the table of contents of Title 16 of the US Code Conservation from the website of the Office of the Law Revision Council, the people who actually create the US Code. Their website has a search engine, but sometimes it is just easier to find the sections you need by scanning the tables of contents. Many online treatises also have browsable and searchable tables of contents that may help you find what you're looking for faster and more efficiently than actually running a word search. Other times, it may make more sense to browse an index than to run a word search. This is the US Code Annotated Browsable Index on Westlaw. You can search it as well as browse it. Often indexes can provide superior access to information because indexes involve the intercession of human intelligence to help the researcher. Once you've decided what to look for and where to look for it and how to look for it, you can start to think of the words to look up in an index or to include in a full text search. Start broadly with key concepts and terms. Cast a wide net to see what you retrieve and then begin to eliminate documents that are outside your scope. Not every search system treats search words the same, especially when you are using a system you aren't familiar with. It can be very helpful to check system help screens to see how that system processes your search. For example, Lexis and Westlaw automatically look for plurals, while Bloomberg Law requires the use of a wildcard to reduce plurals. Also, Bloomberg uses different wildcard characters in its legal and news searches. And even though the relevancy ranking search engines on Lexis and Westlaw do a very good job of ordering results, 
don't expect them to be calibrated to the specific research task you are doing at the moment. Be sure to look at a number of your search results, not just the top hits, and look at them critically. You may find it useful to reorder your results if the search engine provides that capability. In class, we will sometimes have you locate a particular known document to help you learn about how a search engine operates, but in real research, don't expect to find a single case that exactly matches your fact pattern or a secondary source that will teach you all you need to know about a particular subject. Analyze your issues and look for sources that fit with one or more aspect of the particulars of your situation. The key is to think critically about your problem. Choose appropriate resources to research the issue and then be a critical consumer of whatever sources you choose to use. The best tactic is often to combine a variety of methods with a variety of resources to minimize the chance that you will miss something important and maximize your research results. After all, it isn't called one search, it's called research.